Assalamualaikum and greetings to sir. My name is Dayana Binti Abdul Razak. I am from group 2 and this is uh, my group members, Amirul Anas bin Shahma and Chao Ming Hui. This is our table of content. We have seven content in this assignment. So this is our introduction. We have five points for this part. The first point, uh, the term energy efficient is preferred uh, since it is defined by NEMA in NEMA standards publication MG. 1, uh, 1993, motors and generators, and can be used to express the feeder of interest, which is uh, energy efficient. Uh, the second point, we know the motor efficiency uh, is stated as efficient equal to mechanical energy out, divide electrical energy in, multiply with 100%. Uh, and the third point, uh, generally, uh, the efficient determination can be expressed uh, as uh, percent efficiency uh, equal to uh, power out, multiply 100%, Divide by power in. And then uh, the direct measure method, uh, we can know by efficient equal to output power, divide by input power, multiply with 100%. And the last point, uh, with a separated method, uh, efficient uh, can be known as uh, efficient uh, equal to input power uh, minus with losses, and divide with input power and multiply and 100%. Good day, my name is Shami Hui and I will present for the guidelines and requirements of energy efficient motor. So first, the 19th century industry sector in the Northwest that have used the motor has reached an average of 6,062 megawatts for the, and to occupy the total use of electricity is 38%. So it shows that the demand of electricity is being high, so the energy efficient motor has been introduced. Based on the minimum nominal efficient that is designed by the NEMA National e Electrical Manufacturer Association, or we can call it Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. This minimum nominal efficiency is used to optimize the cost savings and the energy use. In this case, the replacements for the standard motors that can be done if the if it runs for many times. This is because it will cause a loss of efficiency if we run for the many time and if you have got any available funds you can purchase the energy efficient motor for purchase initial motor and what is the benefits of EM? EM has high efficiency and consumes less energy compared to the standard motor and we know the standard motor has cost lower than the EM in the initial purchase but the EM, the cost of EM will recover in between one and three years through the simple payback. And next, the application, we, we will show the simple, how to calculate simple payback in the application. This is the nominal, this is the minimum nominal efficiency for designed by the NEMA or IEEE. And this is the standard motor efficiency and the EM efficiency. This is the table for the standard and energy efficiency. And we can see the, the EEM is higher than the standard motor for the efficiency. So that's all for me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Amr Anas bin Shahma and I will present to you the method to measure efficiency on low voltage induction machine. Right. First thing first, we need to know what efficiency itself means. The efficiency is defined by the ratio of the energy output divided by the energy input itself. There are two types of alternatives that we observe to measure the efficiency on low induction, voltage induction machine, which are direct method and indirect method. So we have come to the first alternative, which is direct method. This direct method comes from the term efficiency itself, which is defined by the ratio of energy and mechanical output divided by the electrical energy input. So for the indirect method, it is mean by the input and output power that are measured and evaluated to understand the important components of motor losses via segregation method. So the five categories of losses in motor that we segregated are the core losses, next, friction and windage losses, tetra copper losses, protocopper and trail load losses. From the five losses that I have mentioned before, it can be categorized into intrinsic losses and there are two losses that can be separated which is fixed losses and variable losses. The fix means it is independent from the motor load, while the variable losses means that the losses depends on the load itself. For fixed losses, the first is magnetic core losses and friction and windage losses. 
and for variable it is named for stator losses proto and stray losses now we have come to suggestions for improving the efficiency mostly for power loss area which is for stator proto friction windage and stray load firstly for iron the eddy current losses can be minimized by using a thinner gauge lower loss core steel the longer cores contribute mostly to the design yet lowering the losses due to smaller operating plus density next for our stator we can increase the efficiency by using the cross-sectional area of stator windings is increased by using more copper and larger conductors this can lower the windings resistance and reduce the current flow losses next for the rotor we can use a larger rotor conductor bus which can reduce the conductor resistance and current flow losses by increasing cross-section size and for friction and windage the use of low loss fan designs can decrease the air movement losses and yet can improve our efficiency of motor and stray load loss we can improve the efficiency by using an optimized design and strict quality control methods and stray load losses are to, can keep to a minimum bar and now we have come to my next part of this assignment which is methods to improve the efficiency of electrical motor now before we started our second part of the methods we should go through the introduction first electrical motor has been used in almost sciences and factories various scenarios that have been recorded can cause the numerous effects on the electrical motor itself many alternatives of ways that have been inspected and did by the researchers among the globe to ensure the efficiency of electrical motor will upgraded from time to time now we have come to our alternatives Firstly, we can increase the efficiency of electrical motor by examining the electrical motor frequently. Because motor can be worn out if not inspected carefully, this is caused by the degraded windings insulation by several conditions, and some of them are overheating and corrosion, leakage, short circuits, and eventually motor failure. Right next, the other ways or alternatives to increase the efficiency of the electrical motor is to protect our electrical motor from contagion. The electrical motor are frequently used in dusty, dirty, or chemical polluted situation. And this scenario is one of the primary reasons of motor failure, and it is vital to make sure our electrical motor are safeguarded. This cause, this scenario can be reduced by keeping our work environments, equipment, and fixtures as clean as possible. And other than that, we can keep the motor far from grinding machines and other equipment that generates a lot of pollution, such as dust and dirty stuff. And this can eliminate the possibility of contaminants entering our electrical motor, thus ensure the maximum efficiency and also lowering the probability of machine failures. And now the next alternative is to protect our electrical motor against electrical power load. Nowadays, people like to use extra overload to get faster results, especially in electrical machines. This will cause the electrical motor itself to be burdened due to its overload. This problem can be overcome by installing overcurrent protection it is to detect overcurrent before it becomes an issue and then the protection will cut the power and prevent against overload and from this this will allow the motor to run at optimum efficiency and lowering the risk of failure of our electrical motor and lastly for my part the last way to increase the efficiency of electrical motor is by improve our copper materials in the electrical motor it can help to maximize the electrical motor efficiency it is because the copper has a high conductivity and it is must be utilized extensively and it is because the hysteresis cause core magnetic losses while eddy currents and saturation of the magnetic core accounts only for 20% of overall losses. These losses can be avoided and the efficiency also can be improved by employing high quality materials and strict quality control. And to lessen the effect of hysteresis, low silicon saturation states can be utilized in laminations instead of using the lower cost carbon steels and that core losses can be eliminated in this manner and yet can improve the efficiency of electrical motor that being used. My name is Zhang Minghui and I will proceed for the application part. This is the example of calculation which are 125 HP 1800 RPM TEFC energy efficient motor with full rate load has worked at 85% to analyze the cost savings and the payback period. We can calculate the kilowatt save first, and this is the formula. E STD stands for the efficiency for standard motor, and EHE stands for the efficiency for EEM. For getting this value, we can see on this table and look at the 125 HP, and we can get the standard and EEM. So the value is 
sorry, the value is 92 for standard and 94.7 for the EM. And now we can insert the value inside and get the kilowatt save is 2.1678 kilowatt. Next, we can calculate for the energy save. So this is the formula. And we can multiply the kilowatt save times the annual operating like, hours. So annual operating hours, we assume EM works at 8,000 hours a year. So the, the, we get the answer is 173424 kilowatt hour per year. And therefore, we can calculate for the annual cost saving by insert the kilowatt save and kilowatt savings inside. The demand charge and the energy charge, we can get for the building statement. So the demand charge for this is $5.35 and the energy charge is $0.04 per kilowatt hour. So we insert the value inside and we get the total saving is $7076 or we convert it into RM is 29790.52. In this case, we can conclude we have saved the total $7076 per year. So next, we can calculate for the payback period, and this is the formula. We, we know about the total annual cost saving, now we need to find out the price premium. We can look at this table also, and find out the 125 HP for the lease price. And we can see it is 2106. So 2106 times 0 0.85 come from here, and the total annual cost saving, and can get the answer is 0 0.25 years. So the payback period is 0 0.25 years. If I exchange with the RM, we also get the same answer. So now we can conclude the cost saving is $7076 or, and the payback period is 0 0.25 years. So that's all for me. Thank you. I will pass my turn to Yana. So this is our discussion and we have four points of this part. Uh, so the first one is the regular motor. Replacing it with the energy efficient motor might provide several benefits. So the energy efficient motors are the most expensive at first, costing anywhere from 50% to 30% more than a normal motor. When the energy efficient motors are available for purchase, the break-even rewind cost will add in the selection of the motor. The method are to measure efficiency on low voltage induction machine, where the energy efficient can be defined as N equal to P out divided by P in. So there are five types of losses in electric motor that have been counted, including P core, PFW, P stator, P roto, and P strain. The last point is the second method to increase the efficiency of electrical motors. Uh, that we can do by inspecting them to ensure that they are operating at the maximum efficiency to avoid machine failure. At the end of this discussion, uh, from the analyst calculation part, we can refer the annual cost savings about one year, and we can uh, calculate it as a total saving equal to kilowatt saving, multiply 12, multiply monthly demand charge, plus kilowatt savings, multiply energy charge. And we also know the cost effect, effectiveness uh, that simply payback, which can be stated as simply payback equal to price premium multiply discount factor divided by total annual cost saving. So the last part of this assignment, we have five points of the conclusion to summarize. The first point is it is critical to comprehend what efficiency entails and how it may be measured. As a result, the energy-efficient electric motors can be cost-effective in variety of applications and tend to provide advantages in addition to energy savings. Meanwhile, the energy save and annual cost reductions over a year can be considered cost-effective with the price premium shown in Table 1.2. Aside from that, the energy-efficient electric motor will deliver a slew of benefits to businesses including increased industrial economic efficiency and reduced environmental effect. And the last point, the extra cost of their acquisition can be recouped in five years or less, resulting in energy savings. So this is the table 1.2 for the price premium for one 
1800 RPM. So that's all from us. Thank you.